Hey, hi everyone. Now, uh, welcome to your show, Coffee with Experts. This is your host, Ranma here. And today we have Amanda Jordan, who is the Director of Digital Strategy of Rikiti Roo INC with us. Hey, Amanda, how is it going? It's going great. Thank you for having me. Lovely. Amanda, before we move any forward and uh, pick your brains, let's get to know the human behind the mic. Why don't you talk us through your journey and how did you land up in the digital marketing and SEO space? And more about Rikiti Roo as well, your agency in terms of what you guys do, what you guys specialize in. And we kick it off from there. Sure. So I actually started, thought I wanted to be an engineer at first. Clearly that did not. I am one. I am one. <laughs> I'm... You won't repent it. <laughs> we ended up in the same place. So this is where all engineers right? end up in SEF. Correct. I thought I wanted to be an engineer at first. Decided that was a little bit too math, too much math for me. And yeah. I always had a love for psychology. And I was trying to figure out how I can take the design and creative elements. And also like some of the mathematical and scientific elements of engineering in Marriott with my love for psychology. So marketing is how you do both of those things. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to fall more on the analytical side than creative side. So I went with mm -hmm. SEO and strategy versus graphic design, which is what my actual degree is in. <laughs> so like many Great. SEOs, I started off as something else. My first job out of college was like a SEO local SEO. And I've been mm -hmm. pretty much doing that ever since. I've done some e-commerce too. And I vary from very small businesses, one to two locations to hundreds of locations doing projects with enterprise level clients, um, mm -hmm. big service providers, some of the military branches, things like that. So I've been, been around for a while, have worked on a few different types of projects. I think what's mm -hmm. one of the things that I think about differently and the agency I work for, Rickety Rue, thinks about differently. We consider all parts of SEO, local SEO, essentially, mm -hmm. because when a client comes to us and they need to rank in Houston, Texas, it's not just for Google Maps. It's their website needs to rank there, too. So we focus on all the things that you would expect for someone to focus on for a website to rank, content, link building, technical site speed, structured data, all of those things are part of our strategies and what our team does. So we're really uh, in, in even conversion rate optimization. So we're really like trying to hit all the things that really matter to our clients and we'll give them the best overall SEO performance because it's not just enough to bring in the traffic. We want them to actually convert and be actual customers for our clients. Great, great. Quite a journey. I speak with a lot of marketers and a lot of them coming from psychology background. So I, I have to ask you this, how much of it helps understand the brain of your target audiences when you're doing SEO? What I actually find is that for me, there's not a ton of overlap. Any, any I connect think, honestly, the most of the overlap for me is communication with clients and understanding what they care about. Mm -hmm. Just because I think if you're definitely coming from a like psychology background and you're working in content, it probably plays a lot more of a role in your day to day and how you think about how you do your job. But because I focus on strategy, it's really interfacing with C level executives, like directors, VPs, and making sure that I'm speaking to their the things that they care about in ways that they understand and making sure we're on the they see that I'm on their side and where you have this a common goal. So that's usually how it comes into play for me. It does help you be influential in getting buy in for projects too having understanding <laughs> motiva motivations for people and how to use that to essentially like when an SEO is asking for buying, it's because we think there's something that we're missing that can work, but it's definitely easier to do when you can communicate that effectively to the client. So that uh -huh. psychology interest and background can help with that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you are a speaker at some of the biggest SEO conferences, we talk about the mosque and the Brightons of the world, right? What is your favorite part of sharing your knowledge with the SEO community and how is that feeling of getting onto the stage with hundreds in front of you and just going gaga about SEO? Yeah. So my first time at MozCon, after I got off the stage, I immediately was like, oh, I would do that again because it is exhilarating. One thing that's interesting is that for most of my life, I've had crippling social anxiety, but I actually mm -hmm. love SEO so much and talking about it so much mm -hmm. from just problem solve. It's, it hits all the things that I need as a person to feel fulfilled. I have a lot of intrinsic motivation to be good at my job. And I just like sharing that information with others. I genuinely just enjoy sharing information and seeing other people grow and do well. 
that is really my, of course, like I would, I love it when my agency gets more clients too. Like that's great. Yeah. And right. like, if I could just, if I tell someone something, it's generally what I think is the best thing for them to do, whether they're an SEO who's interested in moving up an industry or someone who's, Hey, I'm in house and I'm not sure what to do about that pro this problem that I have. I also enjoy like putting ideas out there that will help move the industry forward. We all know SEO still has a reputation of being a little sketchy. And I think people like leading the way and showing that they have integrity and caring about the industry, caring about their clients and communicating that with other SEOs and showing them that there is a way to do it where we don't have to churn and burn clients and uh, do things the quick and easy way. I think it's super impactful. The people who find a way to do it in a way that's sustainable and works for clients and can build those relationships. Those are ones that are truly making a difference for their clients and truly contributing to the greater SEO industry. Absolutely. And in talking about industry, you've worked across quite a few, right? So what made you decide to specialize in organic growth for enterprise businesses in particular? I like complex problems. I don't like when things are super easy. I don't like having to do the same thing day in and day out. Enterprise is a match made in heaven for me because I enjoy the difficulties and the struggles that come with working with enterprise because mm -hmm. there's also tons of opportunity to see something grow and do a lot of testing and see what works in one area and what doesn't work in others. So like do a lot of testing to just to validate what you think works in SEO and what doesn't. So there's a lot of different things that are really cool about working with enterprise level clients. And it's typically when you're working with enterprise, you have someone in house on their side who understands what you're doing. So you're not trying to convince someone that SEO is important. They already understand that it's important. And mm -hmm. they're just as curious and excited about the ideas you have as you are. So it allows for you to have mm -hmm. some really, like really great po partnerships with companies when you work on an enterprise SEO client site. Absolutely. And this is a use case of the client being aware of, you know, STO and the the overall processes, right? What about those clients? Have you come across, you must have, where they would not really understand that like it is a marathon, not a sprint like PPC, right? So it's going to take six to nine months to actually make things happen and see the needle moving, all right? So how do you explain those clients that SEO is all about time, you have to follow the process and, and, and not back out midway, right? So what is your experience of handling such situations with such clients? Yeah, a lot of the times I do competitor analysis and show them how far ahead their competitors are and how they likely got yeah. there. So in addition to having my own thoughts and philosophies about SEO strategy, I like to learn the SEO strategies of others, especially those that my clients' competitors are using mm -hmm. for their clients. So, so I do a lot of that to determine, okay, your competitors have built, I don't know, 60 internal links to each of their location pages. You don't even right. have enough content to have 10 links going to each of your location pages. <laughs> so we know yeah. we need to build more content in addition to having more internal links. And while mm -hmm. we're at it, why not make that content worth something and valuable to us? So these are the topics that we know are related to things that your customers care about. These are people also ask opportunities. These are the competitor keywords where we're not ranking for these keywords that we need to focus on as well and putting those all together to be part of that strategy. And then of course, link building also often comes into play and they're typically very behind in links or referring domains yeah. or just general backlinks. And it's often one of the things too, is like, we can do a lot of things mm -hmm. right. We can do almost everything right. But if mm -hmm. there's a huge gap between those backlinks and your competitors doing everything mm -hmm. just as well as you, there's no reason for you to be the choice over someone who's spent more time mm -hmm. and energy and their strategies. That's a lot of the conversation. And the way that we talk about SEO with potential clients, we tell them that we want to see consistent, positive growth. Our goal is not to see spikes because a spike is a good sign that there's probably something gray or black hat going on that is going to eventually get caught and then eventually yeah. that traffic is going to reverse. So we want to see something that's consistent. And we, I think we've done a really mm -hmm. good job of figuring out how to get that consistent growth. We do have clients that do have an insane amount of growth, but that's not necessarily because we're doing something so out of the box and amazing. It's just that there's so many things that we had to fix. And once all those things are fixed, yeah, right. they finally ranked at all or right where they should have been in the first place of the things were done. So yeah, that's how I approach those situations. They have been pretty successful at getting clients to understand that it isn't going to be 
an overnight thing that we're just looking for signs that we are going in the right direction over thinking that overnight we're gonna go from ranking 45 to one for something extremely yeah. competitive and extremely competitive market absolutely and then talking about backlinks what is your take on guest posts versus niche edits or link insertions yeah guest posts i don't think it's it still works it's not like it doesn't work or anything like that um we just find with a lot of our local seo clients that that getting topically relevant links on existing posts or existing sites that already have a lot of authority or traffic uh, works better or focusing things on the on things that are truly local. What we find a lot of times, is even with franchises, is that on a lo location level, the competitors don't really have a ton of backlinks, even when they're built, like beating you out. So building out those local level backlinks, those truly local backlinks, not citations, but like from local sites, from local businesses linking to your site is really impactful. We've even seen sites that were brand new Sites that were brand new that gave a client a backlink, that client immediately saw a lift in visibility and traffic. And it was because it was, came from someone who was well-known in their area, despite their site being brand new. So it's not always about domain authority. There's sometimes that that local relevance, especially if you can get it from a true local entity, is going to help a lot in comparison to yeah. your competitors. And of course, it also always matters what your competitors are doing. That's one of the cool things about local SEO is that you don't have to be the best on the entire internet to rank for something. You just have to be better than the people in your area. And like we say in SEO, it's just that about staying that one step ahead of your competition, right? And then yeah. that's the job. That's the job that you need to achieve, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. We're just trying to be the beat the guy who's beating us. We're not trying to be, right. be number one nationally for the majority right. of our clients. Absolutely. And then you work with enterprise clients, right? And which will need custom approach, right? It is not like a cookie cutter approach uh, that you can fit in there. So can you elaborate on the importance of creating customized SEO processes for different clients from different niches or even for similar niches for that? matter because they will have their different problem statements, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that goes back to what we were just talking about with beating your competitors. Like in every yeah. market, it's different. Even when you're working with a client as a franchise, something that works for one location is not necessarily going to work for another. And that could be based on mm -hmm. general competition level in that area. It could be based on where they're located in that area. It, there's so many different factors outside of making sure they have good content, making sure that they have backlinks that we don't have control over and that if we just do those things and rely on those things, we're going to be missing some things in some areas where they need more of a push than that. So that is when we do like really deep competitor analysis to understand those strategies that the competitors are using and to understand what they're doing that we're not doing. And then when we find out those strategies and we get that one location or those locations who are struggling to improve, we do it for all the locations because now we've, like you said, lend up all of our competitors where we were already beating them with just the things that we knew that we needed to do in the first place. Now we've taken the thing that helped struggling locations and added it to the ones where we're already performing well. So now we've all of our locations are in a level playing field again, but our competitors and those markets where we're already beating them now have to find something else that we're doing and try to one up that on top of already outperforming them in rankings and traffic. So that's the approach that I take. I do think a lot of it is trial and error. Like I never tell anyone just to take my word for it, test and <laughs> verify for yourself because yeah. it, there are a lot of factors like comp competition level, like your competitors, like what's going on your client's website. Mm -hmm. Like the structure of your client's website can be completely different from mine. And that alone means that what you should do is different from what I should do. And making yeah. sure that you account for all of these different things that are going on that don't seem to be SEO related on the surface, but truly do end up having an impact on your SEO as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And talking about clients, give us a favorite client story, Amanda. My favorite client story. Let's see. One of my favorite client stories is actually one that, that I shared recently with a member of, of my team, Caleb. He was like, hey, can you send me some recent wins? And one of them is actually a client that I met at MozCon last year. They came on, they came on with us and I looked, and we looked at what was going on on their site and we immediately found some things that were troubling, like no internal links going to their location pages. So 
they were not getting very much traffic, things like that, or and some of them were not being indexed, things like that. They had very little content on their site, so they were not performing well. In some markets, they were actually doing okay, and that was because low competition level, not because they were doing something so great that mm -hmm. in those specific cities that they were outperforming others. It's just that the competitors weren't doing anything either. We came up with a like a really a content based strategy for them because they were still low on content. Once we had the content, we can get the backlinks and the internal links and the authority and all the things that we were missing all together. So that was our strategy. And after doing that, their Google Search Console clicks for non branded keywords grew by 300 percent. So, and that okay. is, like, yeah, and there was nothing insane about our strategy. It was just thinking about how all the different parts work together and putting a strategy together where the things we were doing on one side would benefit the things on the other side too. It was cohesive versus let's do, it doesn't matter what type of content we put up, let's just do this type of content. But every piece of content we created was related to another piece of content that we were going to create or have already created. And so we were building an internal linking structure between our con between all the content we were creating before it was even created. We already knew how they were right. going to be related to each other and help each other out and then help the key pages that we wanted to rank to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, thank you for that story, Amanda. But before we let you go, I would like to play a quick rapid fire with you. I hope you're sure. game for it. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Your last Google search. My last Google search, it probably was related to real estate in my local area because I'm looking into Client, real estate prospect. investments. I'm sorry? Oh, okay. No, I, I thought it, it might be a prospect. No, real estate investment for, for myself, thinking about the future for okay. my son. <laughs> Actually not very exciting, but yeah, that, that was my re most recent search. He, he plays quite a few video games with you, if I'm not wrong, right? Yes, he, yes, he does. We're getting him ready for going back to school. So he hasn't been playing as much video games. He starts in a couple of weeks. So we're like, All you right. want to play video games, you need to read three chapters of a book. <laughs> <laughs> so he hasn't been playing that much in the last couple of weeks. But he's, yeah, we've been playing a lot. of. I'm very proud of him and his video game skills. He's improved significantly in the last year. Lovely. What, what, what is your favorite video game? Right now, I'm uh, playing Rise of the Ronin. But he's been playing a lot of Halo Infinite and Spider-Man 2. So right. he's, yeah. We have every right. console. We're nerds. <laughs> we have every console. We have pretty much every major title game, <laughs> game in the last year or so. So he has a lot to bounce around between. But he also likes Forza a lot too because he likes cars. Lovely, lovely. All right, moving on. Your celebrity crush? Probably Liam Hemsworth. He's just handsome. Okay. I can't. That's it. That's all of it. <laughs> no, that, that's okay. All right. What did you do with your first paycheck? Uh, the first paycheck of your life? My first paycheck of my life. Oh, dang. Probably next to nothing because it was not a lot of money. I probably mm -hmm. bought like candy at the grocery store or something like that. That's definitely what I did with it. <laughs> all right. If not SEO, what are the career options you, you, you have you know, taken? Huh. If I was not in SEO, I would definitely be doing something behind the computer screen still. But exactly mm -hmm. what it is, I am not quite sure. I, I think no I problem. was, yeah, something analytical for sure. Maybe like medical coding because it's because of the one job security of it and because it does pay <laughs> pretty well. And it is also something you can do from home from behind a computer. Lovely. Thank, thank, thank you for that. Honesty, Amanda. Perfect. Yeah, lovely. It was a great session. I really appreciate it for you taking out time to do this with us. Finally, for our listeners, if they want to reach out to you, how do they do that? Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm Amanda Jordan, or you can find me on Twitter at Amanda T. Jordan. Lovely. Once again, thank you so much, Amanda. Cheers. Thank you for having me.